Welcome. In this video I'm going to go over the procedure I go through to set up a Raspberry Pi with Raspbian Desktop Full. In a previous video I went over the procedure to set up Raspbian Lite which has a command line interface and this one has a graphical interface. I'll put a link in the description to my Raspberry Pi playlist where you can find that video and some other Raspberry Pi videos. I'll also put a link to the hardware I'm using on Amazon and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So the first thing I do is I go to raspberrypi.org and I click on downloads. And I downloaded the Raspberry Pi Imager for Mac OS. They have versions for Windows and Ubuntu also. I downloaded that and installed it. And if you scroll down a little bit, there's Raspbian on the left. I click on that. And here we have three versions. So I did a video on Raspbian Buster Lite. This video is going to be on Raspbian Desktop. So there's two versions. There's the regular desktop and the one with the recommended software. So the regular one is about 1.1 gigabytes and the full one is 2.5 gigabytes. So I downloaded this and saved it to my downloads folder. And that's here. So we have Raspbian Buster Full. It's 2.65 gigabytes. And this is a zip file, but you can just leave it as a zip file. You don't have to unzip it. The Raspberry Pi Imager software can deal with the zip file and it will unzip it as it writes it to an SD card. So I'll switch over to the Raspberry Pi Imager. I'll hit Choose OS. So you can actually just go and click Raspbian here and it will download to install. I prefer to download the image because I use them on different computers and I can store them on my NAS device and then pull them off there as I need them. So what I do is I go down here to use custom and then I'll select the file I downloaded, which is Buster Full. I'll hit open and then I'll click choose SD card. I'll put the SD card in my computer and this will overwrite the whole card, so make sure you don't have anything on there that you need. I'll click that, and I'll hit write. It's going to ask for my password. I'll type that in. Okay, that's finished, so I'll hit continue. I'm going to remove the card from my computer. So the Raspberry Pi is currently powered off. I'm going to insert the card, and then I'll turn it on. Okay, the system is booted up. So we have a dialog box here that says, Welcome to Raspberry Pi. I'll click Next on there. And now it says Set Country. So this is a lot easier than the command line interface. So I'll just click on the country here. I'll go to United States. It automatically chose American English. I'll leave that as that. I'll click on Time Zone, and I'll go down here to Chicago. I'll click on Use English Language and Use U.S. Keyboard, and I'll hit Next. So that's a pretty long and drawn out procedure to do that on the command line interface. This is much faster. Now it's asking us to enter our password. So this automatically logged in, but the default password would be pi as the username and raspberry as the password. So I'll hit next. So now we have set up screen. So you can check this box if you have a black border around your screen because overscan is turned on. I'll hit next. So now it's searched for my Wi-Fi network. I'm plugged into ethernet, so I won't be doing this, but if you are using Wi-Fi, you can select your network here. I'll hit next. So now it says update software, and I do recommend updating the software soon after you install, but I'll be doing that on the command line, so I'm going to skip that here. And now it says your setup is complete. So I'll click restart, it'll restart, and then we'll update the software. Okay, so we've rebooted. Next I'll update the software, so I'll click on the terminal. So I'll type sudo space apt update, I'll hit enter, and this will update the latest package list. Next I will type sudo space apt space upgrade, I'll hit enter, and then I'll type yes, and this will download and install the upgrade. Okay, the update is complete, so I can close out of my terminal now, and then I can go up to the Raspberry Pi icon in the upper left, and I'll click on it and go down here to preferences, and I'll click on Raspberry Pi configuration. So here we can make some configuration changes to the Raspberry Pi. We can change the password. We can change the host name. You can change it to boot into the desktop or the CLI or the character line interface. And then you can turn auto login on or off. It's currently on. So if I wanted to log in with my password, I could uncheck that. And then we have network at boot. It says wait for network. So you could check that if you want to have network before it boots. We can enable or disable the splash screen. Next, we can click over here on display. The first thing we have is overscan, and we turned this off earlier. Then we have pixel doubling, and if we hover over enable here, it says enable pixel doubling to improve usability on high-res screens. Then we have composite video, 
And that's if you want to plug this into like an older television or a VCR or something like that. And then we have screen blanking, and this is like a screensaver type thing. It's not a screensaver, it actually just turns your screen off after inactivity. The next tab is interfaces. So we have camera, SSH, VNC, SPI, I squared C, serial port, serial console, one wire, remote GPIO. So I typically turn on SSH. You might want to also turn on VNC. I'll click on the performance tab. We have overclock and it's not available on this one. We have GPU memory and you can change that here. And then we have the overlay file system. So this allows you to have a read-only system. So typically you wouldn't want to enable overlay file system until you say built something up and then you wanted a read-only system. And then finally we have localization and we went through this earlier. So that's what I do for my initial install of a Raspbian desktop. So if there's anything you do different from me or added on to what I do, I'd like to hear in the comments below. Also leave me a comment if you have any questions. If you liked this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.